it clear now? Yeah, it is. It is very clear. Okay. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to you. The day you have ordained it to be the most holy Sabbath day of all our lives so far. Today, with all these difficulties, you have helped us to succumb. Thank you for your grace. Keep us on alive, oh Father, online, offline. Thank you for all the team of members who are helping on this. May the presence be felt in our heart. May the Holy Spirit may anoint on each one, each heart, to come close to you on this Sabbath day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Actually, I was thinking that the lesson study was on a uh, couple of things on my mind. Uh, uh, I could not uh, take part because the scholarly uh, opinions and the scholarly thoughts for uh, the in-depth knowledge they have presented. If you allow me to say one or two things, as if we lost some time, perhaps uh, that may be the most important. Uh, you can always uh, visit the scriptures again. So one or two observations. <clears throat> From the lesson study again, it has been said, you know, Pontius Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king? And what did Jesus say? And Jesus said, to this end was I born. To this cause I came into the world. In Garden of Eden, Adam is not the king. Before sin, somebody who is from everlasting to everlasting, somebody who is from eternity to eternity, he's the king. To the ancient of days, to receive the kingdom, he's the eternal king. Adam just got the dominion. So just a clarity of thought. And before the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus had said, before the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, for this cause I came into this hour. For this cause, he says to Pilate, I have been born for this cause. So a small observation there. And uh, if you take the story of Darius, a comparative thought, did you sign this? Did you sign this? The people who plotted to get Daniel into trouble, did you sign this? So in the Garden of Eden, in the second chapter, the Lucifer confronts God by saying, did you sign this document by saying, the day when you eat, you shall die? Were you the one who said that? The day when you eat, you shall die. Of course God has signed that. Of course God has said. It's not a written document. Anything that is oral, if there's an acceptance, and if there's an offer, that binds as a legal contract. So it has been went to the third chapter. We are analyzing from the third chapter. So just like Darius, he has been asked, did you sign this document? Did you say the day when you eat, you shall die? So that is where the issue. And Eve uh, beholding the fruit is so beautiful. And do not touch it. God did not say that. Eve has added that. That is not the commandment God has given. The day when you eat, you shall die. The small, small clarities like that. And actually, when you take the name of God, Elohim, all of a sudden, second chapter, it comes here and says, Lord God, Yahweh. All along, Genesis first chapter, God said, God said. <laughs> all these things, if you really count, there are 30 times God, God said, God <laughs> And all of a sudden, after instituting the seventh day Sabbath, it's the Lord God. <clears throat> so it is Lord God who said, not eat or God said. So Lucifer says, did God say? It's not Elohim. Lord God, Yahweh. So there it tells you got all the clues. Unfortunately, Lou, uh, Eve is no match to Lucifer. He could have, she could have easily said, why don't you ask Lord God? She did not see the deception that was there in the question. Did God say? It is Lord God. So the small change like that. 
And also if we take the nakedness that has been talked a lot, the nakedness is not the physical nudity. Second chapter, you have one word, nakedness. They were naked. And the third chapter, again, it used the word nakedness. In Hebrew, you have two different words for nakedness. Second chapter used a different word. And the third chapter is a different word. So it mixed it up in our description. Second chapter, when they were naked, the nakedness is wrong. The third chapter is a wrong. Two different words. So God created Adam and Eve in his image, in his likeness. So how they would have been clothed? How they would have been clothed? You have the answer from Psalms 104, where it says, God has been clothed with glory and light. And entirely a beautiful description Psalms 104 gives the creation story. If God has been clothed in glory and light, definitely Adam and Eve must be clothed in the same garment. So the nakedness that they felt, that's a different word than the third one. Third chapter, where you find that is physical nudity, the utter shamefulness, that's a different thing. So if God has been clothed in glory and light, according to Psalms 104, definitely Adam and Eve were clothed in the glory and light. So meaning, <coughs> that is what they have lost. And uh, uh, Dr. Boyas has alluded to that, but he did not catch the thought. They were naked in the soul, that's what they lost. Not the physical nudity as it has been alluded. It's a different word, a Hebrew word is used. They were naked in the soul, that's what they have lost. So what happened in the third chapter? And as we have been narrated, <coughs> excuse me, did they cover, did they cover themselves with the fig leaves? Yes. If had they covered themselves with fig leaves, they should not be naked, isn't it? Why did they feel they were naked? So the two different words will give the clarity. So the second chapter, when they were innocent without sin, what they lost is the glory and the light by which God himself is clothed, the nakedness that has been given utter shamefulness. So that is what they have found. They lost the, the glory and the light, that is not physical nudity, but here the third chapter, what they lost, the glory of light, they felt they covered, you know the fig leaves, they thought they will not be found as naked, but what they lost, the nakedness of the soul is the point there. And uh, another thing we say, the Jacob's uh, story, as he was uh, going away from home, you know, the dream that he had, the ladder that has been depicted on the ladder, the angels are going, ascending and descending. Angels are the ministering spirit. You had you noticed, Philip comes and tells Nathaniel, and Nathaniel comes to Jesus, and to Nathaniel, Jesus, the dialogue, he says, you will see the Son of Man on whom the angels will ascend and descend. So God used the same dream and the vision that was given to Jacob. And here God has used it in explaining that dream to Nathaniel. So the meaning, if God has been lifted, how high has been lifted? If I am lifted up, how high? To the heavenly throne room of God's very nexus of the universe. If ever Lucy come, Lucifer comes after you, on my deathbed, they say, on my body, you climb to claim my children for whom I died. And for that, angels are coming, ascending and descending. So my friends, there are a lot of deep thoughts are there. So what the dream that Jacob had, God has used in explaining to Nathaniel, that's the time where you find Jesus has been lifted as I as If I'm lifted up, I'll draw all mankind to myself that nobody can snatch anybody from the palm that God has inscribed on his our names. So some of these thoughts. And also the healing that was uh, 
you know, the third chapter of uh, Corinthians, one will plant the seed, another one will water the seed, but that's not enough. Who gives the growth? It's a God, he gives the growth. So these are all, there's no, uh, Dr. Christopher has eluded beautiful thoughts on that, and the Dr. Hull, and the Dr. Boyers, and all others who enumerated some thoughts. I'm not worthy to say some of these thoughts, but nevertheless, trying the loose ends, it gives it much more comprehensive. Our master teacher, in front of a master teacher, how much can we exhibit our wisdom? Somebody who exists from everlasting to everlasting. He just stepped in for 33 and a half years into our human history. Can we comprehend? And we always uh, go to James 1, 5, where it says, if you're lacking wisdom, if anybody lacks wisdom, he says, ask. But I find that's a beautiful verse. You find Luke 21 and 15. If anybody lacks wisdom, and nobody can refute the wisdom that God gives. So, so many beautiful thoughts uh, were popping up as the discussion took place. But nevertheless, thank you so much, Pastor Moses, uh, for giving this opportunity. I'm really sorry for the difficulties, the technicalities. But then, nevertheless, we have the most wonderful, precious parish. And each one is loved by our precious Lord. And there's not a single one is outside of the fold. Jesus engulfed all of us to embrace. If somebody is outside the fold, he, he pushes the horizon much more wider than he can embrace all of us. Because he has lifted on the cross as high as, as, high as the throne room of God. And we come to him boldly to the saving grace of Jesus. And as we humble ourselves to receive that humble gift. So we'll have a small prayer. The Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful Sabbath school discussion that we had. We had our thoughts and our purposes. There is so much, Lord, that we do not understand unless the Spirit guides